Tower Cessna Golf. Bravo Uniform Uniform Romeo continue for North Departure. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Um, so this is orientation flight number two. This actually happened um, almost immediately after my first orientation flight, which if I've done my YouTubes correctly should be linked on screen now if you haven't seen it. Um, so uh, I've changed location quite dramatically from, from where I left off. I'm now um, actually in my old stomping ground. So this is, this is um, close to where I uh, grew up in southeast London um, the airport that you just saw to the right of the aircraft then is actually Biggin Hill which is very very close to where I spent most of my formative years um, and also Biggin Hill was actually uh, was a really really famous airport during um, World War II during the Battle of Britain uh, so the whole area got um, pummeled quite a lot I would imagine um, wasn't there for that thankfully um, so yeah, so this is a flight that I've done. Uh, well, I've done it. A, I've done it a, an awful lot in um, in flight simulator, but also I've done it um, at least probably I reckon twice in real life. Uh, once in a helicopter, um, not while I was in control. I hasten to add, um, uh, but I've taken um, a number of flights out of Biggin Hill. Um, uh, I, I did have um, a couple of lessons at one point, way back in my misspent youth. Uh, but also taken a couple of uh, pleasure flights as well, um, and um, at least I'm trying to remember how many times I've been out over London in an aircraft, but it's 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 probably at least I think it's, it's at least twice I think. Um, so you can get like a, a it, it's really really close to London in in aircraft terms. If you want to drive to London in a in a in a car from Biggin Hill, it'll take you hours because traffic and the southeast and ugh, it's awful. But in an aircraft, it's actually really, obviously, really, really quickly, as most things are in an aircraft. So you can you can leave um, Biggin Hill, uh, which I've done here, and then immediately turn north, and you'll see the Thames um, in the distance, which is um, what you're seeing about now, I would imagine. So what I've decided to do in this flight, this is just a bit of sightseeing, and also just kind of, I wanted to see how, I, wanted, I suppose I wanted to throw a city at, um, my current settings on the game as they are at the moment and just see how it coped because I was getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of frame drop and a little bit of lag uh, from when I was playing it before um, a couple of people actually suggested on the comments on the previous video thank you very much for that that I turn off um, motion blur which I've done I haven't had a chance to test that yet but um, I, there may be some adjustment in the settings going forward to try and keep things moving a little bit smoother. The the previous versions of Flight Simulator, when you get out over cities and out over London, have been, it, for the PCs that I've been running over the years, whenever you get out over London, if you've got all the um, all the detail turned right up, and I say this is on previous versions of Flight Simulator, it absolutely drops to a crawl and it's dropping frames all over the place. Um, considering the amount of... Um, uh, scenery that this is is throwing around and the uh, the fidelity of the simulation that it's also coping with and then all the other nonsense that I'm now getting my PC to do while I'm playing games so you know uh, recording software and um, discord and all that kind of stuff I think it copes remarkably well actually don't get me wrong if I get the chance to do an upgrade at some point in the future hell yes I'm taking it but um, at the moment I think it, it's running so far, the experience anyway, so far, is, is it's running good enough. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it, actually. So uh, immediately ahead of the aircraft at the moment um, it actually is, is London City Airport, um, which is very distinctly different from, for those of you who don't know the topography and geography of the area, it's very distinctly different from London Airport, or what's referred to as London Airport. That's actually way out to the west. We're east of the city at the moment. Um, and London City Airport is actually really, really small. It's only got one runway, as far as I'm aware, but it's actually uh, really, really busy. So it it it, um, it brings in an awful lot of um, jet traffic uh, and and turbo um, passenger turbo prop traffic from the continent. Um, and it's a really unusual airport. I'm going to get nerdy on you now. It's a really unusual airport as well. Uh, most runways, my understanding is, and pilots um, and Tado, if you're watching, please correct me. Um, most uh, runways where possible tend to run sort of on your kind of cardinal um, um, compass headings so they'll be sort of you know where possible it'll be north to south or east to west kind of thing 
um, but the, the runway at London City Airport, because there's a huge amount of towers, which you can actually see just in front of the aircraft now, um, right in front of the airport, um, it's actually slightly offset. I can't remember what angle um, it sits at, but it's a really weird angle that it sits at. It's one of the more unusual larger airports in that regard. So the, the large uh, round dome-shaped building, this is the River Thames, the large uh, round-shaped dome building that you're seeing on the left there now, that's the Millennium Dome, which was set up as an exhibition centre. Um, well, it was originally called the Millennium Dome. It was set up as an exhibition centre for um, the, the turn of the millennium in, in, in 1999, 2000. Um, it's now called the O2 Arena, I think. It's sponsored by one of the big sort of um, uh, mobile phone networks here. So they hold a lot of concerts and um, all that kind of thing down there. Really unusual, really weird looking um, dome-like building. Uh, I worked for a company a few years ago, a good few years ago, um, and in actual fact around the early two, 2000s, um, a gaming organisation called Barry's World, and we had our launch event um, in the area surrounding uh, the, London, uh, the Millennium Dome, as it was at that point. Boring little fact for you. You'll also hear my PC doing sort of a few bleeps and a few boops and things like that. Uh, that's unfortunately Discord, I must remember, <laughs> when I'm playing games and recording to uh, switch Discord uh, off or get rid of it completely. Um, the noise you actually heard then was Re was ducking in and out of a stream that I was doing so that she could watch uh, what was going on. So as I say, we're, we're, we're in East London at the moment, east of, east of the main part of the city. There was a new financial centre that was built here called Canary Wharf. Uh, which you'll see, I think, on the right-hand side uh, in a second. And it's when, it, when you're familiar with um, <coughs> with uh, this part of, of well, of, of London, but also of any city, I guess. Um, when you look at somewhere like Canary Wharf, you can see the, um, I suppose the the the, top, the topographical inaccuracies or the mapping inaccuracies. Um, uh, don't get me wrong, it's doing an incredible job. You know, I know that I'm over London, I know I'm at Canary Wharf, um, and I know it's, you know, to my right-hand side. There's, there should be a big tower there, um, uh, which, is, which isn't represented terribly well in, in, the, in the base um, simulation. To the left, actually, you can see the Shard, for example, however, which has clearly been hand-built and placed in there, which is a, another very, very prominent building. Yeah, so this is Canary Wharf on the right-hand side now. So some of it, some of the major buildings, uh, quite quite a few of the major buildings in London are, 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 are represented incorrectly or are, or are, are just not there, which is you know that's fine. They've 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 mapped the entire world, so you know you can you can you can let them go with that. It's absolutely fine. It's still absolutely stunning, don't you know? It's still incredible. And if I was flying over a city I didn't know very well, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a clue. One of the other things that was quite odd um, on the right hand side, you'll see it coming up in a minute. There is a giant wave. There we go. That's, <laughs> uh, that's I guess a, a, an odyssey in the terrain, a, an odyssey, an oddity in the terrain, and the um, and the way it's trying to render the river. Um, so it looks like a massive tidal wave in East London at the moment. It's just kind of hanging there. One of the things that's um, that's missing from the simulation, and you'll see it when we get up there, um, is uh, what's called the London Eye which is a huge, um, I want to call it a Ferris wheel, but it's like, you know, a great big kind of, it looks like a massive um, fairground ride, and it's got, um, it's a big wheel that you kind of sit on and, um, or stand in, and it's got these pods that sort of give you a, a bird's eye view over London. Again, massive tourist attraction kind of thing. That's missing, is the point I was making there. That's, um, you won't see that in the simulation, but it's got, you know, the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben, and that kind of stuff. I know there is um, uh, that there are uh, uh, scenery. I think there's a scenery add-on for London already that that will that will go down to sort of really finite detail, um, and is is way more accurate than the, the default that you get. I'm probably not going to bother investing in that at this point. I kind of I, th I would imagine that will have a, a bigger uh, system overhead anyway, and I kind of like to just kind of, you know, experience the game as is for the moment before I start doing major add-ons. Um, I can't really see me doing 
anything like that much in the future, but who knows, we'll see. If I was going to add anything, I'd probably, I think it would probably be the area where I live now. If I get any sort of more detail on that kind of thing, I think that would be of more value to me. So below me there now, you'll see um, Tower Bridge. Uh, and the building just the other side of it is the Shard, which I was talking about earlier. I used to walk past that uh, every day on my way to work, having come into London Bridge Station. like it's got a tower sticking out the side of it there so it hasn't been like 100% accurately modelled but they've done a pretty good job it does look pretty good so my uh, I'm not uh, overly familiar with the bridges over London but my understanding is that they've not been um, um, again entirely accurately modelled again which is you know it's fine it doesn't matter at all fairly certain if I was doing this in real life that the, um, the government would get quite annoyed with me and would probably get shot down in fairly short order. We're coming up on, um, on the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben and things like that and they generally don't like aircraft getting this close to the seat of government. So directly opposite, so the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben's on the right hand side, directly opposite that and around this point um, you should have the London Eye, which is the Ferris wheel thing that I was talking about. It is not there. That's okay. around this area as well there's the most of London's really really massive um, tourist trap um, landmarks and things like that are all down here so the, the Mall is in front of us now you should that should be Buckingham Palace I believe um, in front of us it doesn't look very Buckingham Palace-y when you get there that the, the um, they haven't um, handcrafted a, uh, the building and put it in there um, but that's that's basically where the Queen's gaff should be in front of us That, I believe, is meant to be Buckingham Palace on the left that just went under us. <laughs> my uh, my dad uh, grew up in London um, during the uh, during and just after the war, um, and he uh, he sadly passed about um, seven or eight years ago. Um, but I managed to get him into flight simulation um, in his later years. Uh, he resisted for a long time, but I managed to get him into flight simulation eventually. And he used to he used to do this very flight, and would often um, malign the fact that you know it wasn't 100% accurate. He loved it anyway. I mean, he really enjoyed his, his time in it. We talked about it all the time. Um, I would love for him to have seen this version of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a shame this didn't come along sooner. He would have he would have absolutely loved it. This really was his his old stomping ground when when he was a kid. He was on these very streets below us. So at this point, um, I've turned sort of uh, properly west, as you can see, by the colossal star that is sinking on the horizon. Um, and I'm on the lookout for Heathrow Airport, um, which is where I intend to land. Uh, Heathrow Airport is uh, London Heathrow, uh, which is generally what's referred to as London Airport, Heathrow really. Tower, Cessna, um, it's actually... Bravo, um, I'm not going to say nowhere near London, of course it's near London, but it's um, a good few miles west, in actual fact.
Bravo Uniform, Uniform, Romeo Heathrow Tower. Make straight and runway 27 right. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 112 right. at 15. And the sun on the horizon is amazing. Fly straight and runway like I said before, like, you consider how much um, the, the, the PC is being pushed at this at this point. I'll put my system specs, actually, I meant to do that last time. I'll put my system specs in the, um, in the comments below just so you can have a look. I'm not running like an absolute beast of a PC or anything like that. When you consider what the, the simulation's pushing around at the moment, it really does do a pretty good job. When it gets um, when it gets close to Heathrow, that being said, when it gets close to Heathrow, it will get a little bit choppy as it starts to load in AI aircraft and the, and the airport itself. But, you know, again, what I, considering what I put up with in the past when playing Flight Simulator, um, it, was, it was nothing really. It, it really does do a pretty good job. Again, at this point, this flight was was um, straight after um, the previous flight uh, that I'd done. So I haven't, again, I haven't set up any keys or, or anything like that yet. This is literally pretty much my f still my first day in the simulation, really. Um, and you'll note as well, sorry, I forgot to mention that I changed aircraft as well. This is the, the venerable uh, Cessna 152, which is what most of the pilots yeah, in the world, I, I want to say, probably learn to fly in. Um, certainly a huge quantity of them anyway. It's, it's one of those, it may seem a silly thing to say, but it's one of those aircraft that's naturally aerodynamic and it doesn't want to fall out of the sky, so um, it's, it, it, it's pretty much a kite, really. It's, very, it's a, a really simple aircraft, but it's also, a, um, certainly in the simulation anyway, I won't pretend to speak from any level of actual real-world authority, but I find it a joy to fly. Just about see um, Heathrow 27 right in front of me now. Testing uniform, uniform, Romeo cleared to land runway 27 right. Wind 242 at 19er. Cleared to land runway 27 right, Cessna uniform, uniform, Romeo. So that was the tower uh, giving me permission to land, um, and me replying, and, and I now begin what I laughingly call my approach. This is, uh, as you can see, there's some serious um, frames being dropped at this point. Um, as I mentioned before, I haven't done any graphics optimization or anything at all on this yet. This was literally my sort of second time out of the gate, so it's like chugging all around the place, but it does clean up pretty quickly. I'm guessing where it's just loading stuff in to make it look pretty for me when I land. Um, uh, and as I've said before, none of it was really a problem as such, given what I um, put up with on previous versions of Flight Sim. This was this was nothing really. It was you know once it once it was done, it was over, and that was it. So right on the threshold of uh, um, Heathrow 27 right now. The lovely thing about <clears throat> the Cessna 152 is that when you're, you're, you'll notice it hasn't given any storm warnings or anything like that. It's, you can absolutely crawl through the sky and it'll stay aerodynamic. <laughs> it's lovely. Lots of parked aircraft on the left. I've actually using, um, the, the simulation uses uh, real apparently uses real world air traffic data to populate the AI. Um, now at the moment, uh, because of the state of the world, there isn't a lot of air traffic. Um, um, so I suspect that in, in actuality London Airport, uh, London Heathrow should be a lot busier than this at uh, this time of day. Uh, what might be worth doing um, just to make it a little bit more interesting is turn off the real world data and put on um, there's a there's an option to have populated um, populated AI instead of you know randomly populated AI instead so I might give that a go because it's kind of quiet
there we go, we're down. Again, that's, uh, uh, the aircraft still has the requisite number of wings, um, so I'm calling that a win. Uh, I was quite happy with that, that was okay, you know, I did okay. Um, so I guess the next thing with it really is for me to, I need to get to grips with the keys. You'll see, you'll see me sort of using the menus and things like that um, with the mouse. I really want to try and avoid that. Um, I'd rather just push buttons and, and do everything I can with keystrokes. And the other thing I want to get to grips with um, is the camera suite. There is a, a real nice camera suite with it. Um, so I can get, you know, proper sort of uh, out of the aircraft views. <clears throat> so I really, I really do want to try and get to grips with that as well. Um, I don't know what the development roadmap for the game is yet. There's been quite a few updates um, to scenery and, and systems and whatever since it came out. So I need to take a look at the development roadmap. I have heard helicopters mentioned, which is great. Um, and also, I think there's quite a lot of people asking for um, some version of multi-crew. So you can put a, um, someone else in your aircraft if they own the game and they can sit alongside you. If that's the case... Re has expressed interest in uh, in doing what she does in Elite Dangerous, which would be amazing. We'd love to do that. So um, fingers crossed that that will come at some point in the future. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, chuck us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Take care.